If you're looking to get your first network switch, you may be wondering if there are any that don't require power, especially if there aren't any available outlets nearby where you're looking to position the switch. Now I am sorry to disappoint you and say that all network switches require power to function, but there are some that can be powered by USB or power over ethernet. If you don't have a mains outlet available or it's just too inconvenient to reach, power over ethernet is definitely the way forward. So we'll look at how this works and how to set it up in today's video. Hey everyone, it's Chris back again from homenetworkgeek.com where we talk about everything home networking. If you enjoy the video and you find it helpful, be sure to drop it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's jump straight in and discuss network switches requiring power to function. So network switches do require power to function, but there are some alternatives to the usual AC power that most will use. AC power is clearly the most obvious solution when it comes to powering your switch. And a power supply will always be included with the switch, so it really is just a case of plugging it into an available outlet. If you have an unmanaged switch, this is literally all you need to do to get up and running. Once you've given it power, start connecting your devices using ethernet cables. Even with managed switches that require some additional setup, once you've given it power, you can begin the setup process. The problem arises when you don't have any available power outlets nearby where you're looking to position your switch. Most people don't have enough outlets in their home as it is, let alone exactly where you need them. So what are your options if you want to use a network switch but don't have any power outlets available to give it the power that it needs to function? So if you aren't able to use the mains electricity supply to power the switch, you do have a few alternatives. These are a USB powered network switch or a switch that makes use of power over ethernet. Out of the two, I would highly recommend going down the PoE route rather than having to rely on a simple USB powered network switch, which simply won't be good enough for the vast majority of people. USB powered switches typically aren't very powerful and often limited to just a few ethernet ports. Plus you still need to find an available USB port to act as the power supply. It's no good looking for the USB port on the face plate of a power outlet Otherwise, you might as well just use the outlet itself. You also don't really want to be plugging it directly into the back of your PC, as chances are you're going to be wanting to provide your PC with Ethernet anyway. Not to mention that it can take up space on your desk, and some of them can be quite noisy under heavy load. Power over Ethernet is definitely the preferred solution here. Power over Ethernet is a process in which electrical power and data are transferred over a single ethernet cable. This allows the single cable to provide both power and data to PoE devices like wireless access points, security cameras, and you guessed it, PoE network switches. To get an understanding on how PoE works, let's take a quick look at how an ethernet cable itself works. Within a standard cable, you'd find eight individual copper wires that are twisted together to form four pairs. Back in the day when only 100 megabit networks existed, only two of these pairs were used for data transfer. This left the other two pairs available for delivering power. Given that most networks these days support speeds of 1000 megabits plus, they inevitably have greater requirements and make use of all four pairs. This of course doesn't leave any left over for delivering power. Power over ethernet works by injecting a voltage of around 48 volts into the cable. This is a particularly low voltage which keeps everything safe while still delivering the power that these devices need to function. Just like with wireless and other protocols, there are standards that PoE must meet. The two most common are 802.3AF and 802.3AT. 3AF is often referred to as just PoE, whereas 3AT is referred to as PoE+. The difference between the two is the amount of power that a device can use when it's being powered by PoE. 3AF can only consume up to 15.4 watts of power, whereas 3AT can consume almost double at 30 watts. This makes it a much more flexible standard when it comes to choosing which devices you want to provide PoE power to. Now the two most common PoE devices you'd likely find in a home network are a wireless access point and security cameras. Now both of these typically have greater power requirements, so I would recommend a power sourcing device that meets the 3AT standard. Okay, so you've decided that you want to go down the route of using PoE to power your network switch. So what do you need and how do you get it set up? The most important thing that you need is a switch that is compatible and can actually be powered by PoE. Now I would recommend the eight port Unify switch for most people, but if you need some more ports, they do offer a 24 port version. This particular switch has a dedicated port for receiving PoE and then other ports that can deliver PoE to other devices, like the wireless access points and the security cameras. Running a regular ethernet cable to a PoE switch still won't be enough though, 
So again, you do have a few options here. The first, which I typically wouldn't recommend, is to buy a second PoE switch and have that plugged into the mains electricity supply to give it the power that it needs. Now this isn't terribly convenient and probably end up costing you more than the alternative. So the other option is to use what's known as a PoE injector. These work by making a non-PoE compatible switch work with PoE devices, including your PoE network switch. Again, over a single ethernet cable. They are easy to install and provide a great way of expanding your network without the need for any expensive additional networking equipment or hardware. So to use a PoE injector is really simple. You first need to take one ethernet cable, plug one end into one of the available ethernet ports on your router, and then plug the other end into the PoE injector itself. You then need to take a second cable and plug one end into the other end of the PoE injector, and then the other end into your switch. PoE injectors do require mains power to function, so why wouldn't you just plug your switch in in the first place? If you think about it, using a PoE injector gives you much more flexibility around where you position everything. Yes, the PoE injector will need to be relatively close to a power outlet, but then you could just run a longer ethernet cable to the switch or the other device that you're looking to power. Given that a single length of the ethernet cable can be up to 100 meters long, you can place your network switch pretty much wherever you want. The take home message here is that it's much easier to run a longer ethernet cable than it is to run a longer power supply. All network switches require power to function. Whilst most people will use the traditional AC power, there are still other options available. USB powered network switches typically aren't recommended, given that you'll be limited by the amount of power that USB can provide. So often, these switches aren't very good and limited to just a few ethernet ports. Power over ethernet is definitely the way to go if you don't have an outlet available for your switch. Just remember that you'll need a PoE compatible switch and most likely a PoE injector. This will allow you to place the switch pretty much wherever you want in your home and have it powered by a single ethernet cable. So I hope you found this video helpful guys and you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop it a like, subscribe if you haven't already and ring that bell to turn on notifications. And also don't forget to head on over to homenetworkgeek.com where I have a ton of articles that cover everything home networking. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.